Hi everyone, this is Pastor Jason Elder of the Poughkeepsie Reformed Church and I welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. All of our routines are changing during this time. I believe that most of us have had some extra time to think. We've come to new realizations. We've come to realize just how our medical professionals go above and beyond during this time. We realize perhaps how we miss seeing friends and being able to gather for worship in public. That's something I don't take for granted anymore. Maybe some of us have realized how different it is to be working from home. That's my realization. I'm filming this at our home and I decided, you know what? Life is life. So right now, one of the kids is watching Star Wars, another one is napping, and soon you may hear the dribble and pounding of a basketball. That's our life, that's our life. But we come together in this moment to worship. These are all new realizations. You know, we can have new realizations about God as well. We can come to have new insights about the importance of Christ in our life. When we have those insights, those insights may be called epiphanies. And the theme of our worship today is insight that we can have new insights about God, about ourselves, and our world. I don't know where you are in your life or your faith right now, or what you bring to with you as you participate in worship, but please know you are not alone. We are here and the Lord meets us even as we meet apart. As we prepare for worship, please take a few moments during this prelude to quiet yourself and to think upon the greatness of God's love for you. No matter who you are, no matter where you are in your life or your faith, God welcomes you. So friends, let's worship the Lord. We are a worshiping people. And so now together, would you please join me in the call to worship? God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. 
Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change. God's faithfulness endures to all generations. Therefore we will rejoice, for God is faithful to us. We give praise to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We worship the one who is our hope, joy, and stay. Alleluia. We are not only a worshiping people, but we are a confessing people. We confess the truth. We want the truth to be known about ourselves and about God. Would you join me now in the prayer of confession? Lord, you who suffered greatly and are forbearing with us, know that we are impatient. We need your help. We have room for many things, but not inconvenience. Unclutter our lives, for we have too much, consume too much, and expect too much. Grant us perspective, eternal God, that we may see this world through the eyes of others. Grant us compassion to do our part. Grant us gratitude for our daily bread. Lord, take away impatience and self-importance and give us space, simplicity, and thankful hearts. Amen. And now, friends, hear this assurance of pardon from Deuteronomy chapter 31. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Friends, this is the good news. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ is with you and also with you. Let's now turn our attention to the reading of God's Word. Today's scripture lesson is from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it, and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. We have heard the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> In our liturgical year, Advent leads us to the joy of Christmas time, which is then followed by Epiphany, which is the remembrance of God's guiding the wise men by a star. They followed that auspicious star and it led them to Christ. Uh, the worthiness and the goodness of Christ, and then there, sharing their story with others, was the Epiphany. Understand this. They had only a small hint of where the star would take them. Matthew chapter 2 tells us that in the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child has, who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. So, 
The wise men see the star, and they are internally prompted to follow the star, no matter where it led them. Naturally, they think a king would be born in a royal family, so they end up in Jerusalem, thinking that perhaps King Herod had welcomed a baby boy. Not so. So the wise men have a conference with other religious individuals, and they find that the baby is not born in Jerusalem, but in a small town called Bethlehem. We call this whole adventure epiphany, a journey, a manifestation, a sudden realization, a revealing, a discovery of Christ. In our passage today, Isaiah, that earnest and honest prophet, has three epiphanies. One about himself, one about his country, and one about God. The passage begins, in the year that King Uzziah died, in the year that King Uzziah died. Uzziah was not perfect, but he was a good king who provided stability and growth and security for the country. Uzziah was the only king Isaiah had ever known. To say, in the year that King Uzziah died, is saying, in a year when we faced something we had never faced before. In the year that everything changed, I had an epiphany. Yes, in the year that there was no one sitting on the throne for the first time in 52 years, I had a revelation. My epiphany was that God was still seated on God's throne. The throne in Jerusalem was vacated, but not the throne in heaven. We are waking up right now to something that we will always remember. In under 90 days, everything has changed. We will look back and say, remember 2020? In the year of COVID-19? Remember the quarantines? Remember that school was out for so long? Remember the confusion? Remember how that was the most we ever watched the news? We need reminding of something right now. <clears throat> we need to remind ourselves that God is not hiding in a corner somewhere, scared, unable to cope with the situation. God is active right now in our community. God is empowering us. God is giving us the patience we need. God is giving us the intellect to tackle this situation around the earth. God right now is holding the hands of the scared. God is steadying the hands of the medical professionals. God is opening hearts with empathy as we Americans now know what it's like to face life and death circumstances and to be concerned for the welfare of our families and our friends. We now have the ability to understand the perspective of migrants and immigrants and all the vulnerable people who are always with us. It's just now we've become one of the vulnerable. That is an epiphany. And it's an epiphany we need human frailty and divine steadfastness. Isaiah's vision is large, a holiness he had never imagined, and a lowliness of spirit he had never experienced. He cries, woe is me. And then he looks at the vulnerability of the nation he loves, and he said, woe is us. Yet, that epiphany is only the beginning. It's helpful to have an insight, but just having an insight is not the point. The point is, what are you going to do with the information? If you see yourself as vulnerable and need of God's help and 
grace, then what are you going to do with that knowledge? Are you going to take action? And so Isaiah says that he hears God asking the question, who will go into this beautiful and broken world and serve and be a helper? Isaiah, because his eyes are opened to the generosity and the power of God that meets us in our moment of panic and anxiety and wonderings, says, send me. Since God has shown good to me, I choose to show goodness to others. This life-changing, nation-altering event that Isaiah went through informed him. It was a teacher for him. And it led him to live a life of service, devotion, and worship. Isaiah only knew King Uzziah for 52 years. But before his death, Isaiah would see three more kings. He lived in a time of instability and constant concern. And yet Isaiah shows us that God can empower us to be a faithful, caring, truthful, empathetic presence in the life of our community, no matter what. I want to ask you a question. What kind of epiphanies have you had over the past month? Let me ask you another one. How can you care for others during this time? You know, eventually as our world and our community begins to heal and rebound, we will need people to step up and to serve. People will need clothes and food and shelter. Is there an organization that you could partner with? I've been thinking this week about how our church will play a role in creatively meeting the needs of others. Listen, when it all shakes and when it all changes overnight, God is on the throne. He is our leader. He is our help. God is our refuge. And so may this time be a time when you see God's goodness and glory and that you worship God like you've never worshiped God before. And may this be a time of renewal for your family as you spend more time with them. And may this be a turning point for so many of us who've turned away for one reason or another. May this be the call that welcomes us back. May a great epiphany happen to us all and change us to worshipful, worshipful servants for the rest of our days. This is the word of the Lord. So we give thanks to God. Amen. Often after we hear the word of the Lord, we respond to God with our tithes and our offerings. Uh, but uh, as you know, and in my correspondence this week, I uh, wrote to you concerning the ongoing expenses that the church um, experiences during this time and every time. And so thank you so much for your generosity, for your prayers, uh, for uh, your communication and how you're keeping tabs on one another during this time. But, but thank you. Thank you so much. As you've heard me say so many times, all of this works uh, on the fuel of generosity. We're still meeting needs through the loan closet. People still have those kinds of needs and we want to be able to serve them during this time. And so may we use this time to think about how we can serve God. And now, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. 
Amen. Would you join me now in the prayer of dedication? Lord, you are steadfast in your grace and your mercies are new every morning. Please give us opportunities to serve and insights that inspire us. Amen. Let's now enter a time of prayer, which will be followed with the Lord's Prayer, which we will pray together. Let us pray. God of healing, God of wholeness, we bring our brokenness, our shortcomings, our fears, and our despair, and we lay them at your feet. God of healing, God of wholeness, we hold out hearts and hands, minds and souls to feel your touch and to know the peace that only you can bring. And God of healing, God of wholeness, this precious moment in your presence and power, grant us faith and confidence that here broken lives by your grace are made whole. We pray for our nation and for our leaders who are making very difficult decisions. We pray that you would guide them with their wisdom, that they may act swiftly and decisively, and that you would help us all uh, to pray and to serve where we are able, Lord. We thank you for our church family and for our friends and for a faith that guides us into eternal hope. And so, God, we look to you as you are on your throne, and we ask for your help. And we make our prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for worshiping uh, the Lord with us. Thank you so much for how you make your community better, how you make your church family stronger. And now may you be blessed. And may the grace, peace, and joy a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit dwell in your hearts today, every day, forevermore. Amen. Blessings and peace as you go.